Alrighty. J360 here. Finally, with my Frost review. Now, I've been playing this character for the entire season. Um, through both combat leagues, through every patch that's come out. And uh, I've been kind of hesitant to put out a review. Uh, but uh, here it goes. Uh, I do see plenty of videos that people put out. Um, I watch everything uh, to see what people are posting. And I kind of, instead of making this sort of like a combo video, I want to make this more so um, the, uh, I guess, the methodology behind uh, playing Frost. Um, I've endured every matchup in this game, uh, pre-patch and post-patch, still getting f uh, used to a few of them, but I will say that uh, I do feel like Frost uh, has always been in a competitive space. Um, she's She's been a character that relies more so on good reads uh, and is more so the jack-of-all-trades than the master of like rush down or zoning or runaway. Um, she is a very middle of the road character uh, that has quite a few strengths and she has her weaknesses. Uh, some of those weaknesses have actually just been patched out. So uh, I've been waiting for, for this. Um, I'm pretty happy about it. Um, although uh, I do feel she still has uh, one useless variation. And I play a ton of it. I don't. I don't like to call it useless, but uh, it does have its uses against certain characters. But most of those characters have already been have had those problems nerfed out. So uh, I don't think uh, it has as much use as this really strong variation now. Um, and by really strong, I mean in comparison to her other. So we're just gonna go over it. So her variation, uh, known as Ice Machine, um, is the one that carries the shield. Uh, it has Augur Lunge, uh, and it has these Frost Bombs, right? So, kind of just to quickly go over some of her strengths, uh, I do feel that uh, Bladespin being minus four on block is a, uh, a great tool for Frost to really um, establish some sort of pressure. Um, now. Things may not always jail into them unless they're on hit. On hit, they will always jail. Uh, but max distance, this is a great tool to poke with. Uh, and I'm going to get into certain specifics uh, regarding when to use it and uh, what to do uh, after it's been blocked or hit. So first, I, I kind of just want to go over some of the recent changes because that's kind of like the hot topic of the discussion. She's had her back one changed. So back one uh, used to be uh, pretty bad because it was 15 frames, right? Or 16, one of the two. But it was really hard to use in the neutral. Uh, it's always been uh, mid, but you really had no reason to use it over back two because back one, although it's faster now, uh, reaches nowhere near as long as back two. And fighting characters like Noob, Cybot, or Devora, this was almost useless um, because they've always had the range to combat it or to counter it. Uh, but now she has it as a poking tool uh, and a really good one at that. Uh, the spacing on back one two uh, can vary depending on when you end uh, the string. So I personally like to use back one alone because back one two leaves you right here and this is good for uh mid screen i i guess uh, back one really leaves you farther than where you started i'm going to show you that again because it was pretty quick oh also flawless block is on time to turn this off i don't know why it's flawless blocking if it's off but oh it's random type gotcha all right here we go so this leaves you pretty far. And I started right in front of Liu Kang. But now I'm over sweep distance. I'm past it. I'm in range for down four. So back one two is great if you're going to get uh, some sort of confirm. Or to kind of like go for a bit of pressure with that. But 
I'd say back one alone is superior because it leaves you at the range that Frost constantly wants to be at. The down four range, the sweep range, the back two range, where she can comfortably do these moves against most characters in the game. Now, uh, back one also opens the door of not being able to mash out of some of her strings. So before jump in kicks uh, leave you anywhere from 7 to 12 uh, in plus. So you would think you get a guaranteed standing jab, but the way it works in this game is that if something is blocked, um, even though they're, they're jailed blocking, they can duck uh, pretty quickly. So this, this is not guaranteed. So standing one is never guaranteed because they can always block it even if you have, even if you're plus 12. And I'm just going to show you a quick demonstration of that. So that's plus 12, right? So if I jump in and I do plus 12 and then I go for standing one, for some reason uh, my my advantage goes away. So now. I simply mash under it. I let go of block, and I mash down one. And if you take a look, he's plus 11. Frost is plus 11 when she's doing that. So that was a huge problem with uh, with uh, Frost. She didn't necessarily have anything fast enough to check people off of the deep jumping kicks, but now she has this. This is incredibly fast, and it's plus. So plus 12 into an 11 frame move I'm going to always be able to get it out. Uh, there's no contesting it now. Uh, it's one of the problems that Frost had was really doing anything off of a jump in. Other than like, you know, you can always jail off of a jump in uh, two. Jump in one, you can jail off of as well, but it's not a uh, guaranteed uh, string that has to be blocked after it. So uh, this made her in turn also made her corner game even stronger now frost has always 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 had a very strong corner game always since day one and it's been the space that she's always wanted to have you in because at this point uh i used to rely on one two uh one three two uh because it would be plus three and it'd leave me at the space where i can walk back and check with back two uh, however, now that people are getting better at flawless blocking, you can flawless block the third hit of any 1-3 string. So 1-3-4, 1-3-2, uh, they all have a flawless block gap at the end. Uh, so now, with the addition of back 1, you get pressure that puts you... Well, you get safer pressure that really puts you in a space where you can back 2. Now, I know some of you are thinking back 1 is minus 8. Minus 8 in this game is really hard to contest from that distance. So the best part about this is that she can walk back. So I'm going to set the CPU uh, to go ahead and try to do something after that, right? So I can try. Of course, Lucan can, can do this, right? So, But it's, it's really hard to react to because you're waiting for her to finish a string. So you're like, oh, so then you go for something and you get clipped by back two. So minus eight at this distance is favorable for, for Frost, regardless of whether or not she's minus. Because at that point, if she makes the proper read, she can just back up all the way and keep you in the corner off of back twos and projectiles. Um, now, the reason that she wants you in the corner is because her damage in the corner is outstanding. It really is. So for instance, if I check you with one of these, I can get you into a pretty simple combo for, whoops, I messed that one up. It's a pretty simple combo for about 30%. So 314 damage for one meter, right? Also, she has strength, such a strength in her back two that it's also a crushing blow. So if you're mashing something, and I back up, and I hit you with this, you're, you're going to eat up a lot of damage. So let me add on a crushing blow, easy crushing blow, just so everyone can see. Uh, 
And this is not this is not an optimal combo. Optimal combo lands you about 37, 374 points or so. Um, and you can make it reach upwards of 400 if you want to use a second meter. But she can kill you in three guesses in the corner. And that's really important. Um, and all, all it costs is one meter. Um, now, I will go over posting like optimal combos later on. I, I'm going to do separate videos for that. Uh, because I have quite a few um, when it comes to meterless, uh, meter or uh, crushing blows, but she just has really good options. Now, the only only crushing blow I'm not a fan of, honestly, is this one, the auger launch crushing blow, because you have to you have to load it up ahead of time, and it takes three chances to do this. So, like, if you're willing to give up all Oki to load the crushing blow then go for it but it's it's really not i in my opinion it's not worth it unless you have the the meter um or the round is ending like let's say the round is ending i would always finish it with that just to kind of load it in case i need it um but 29 frames and of of uh advantage you can get from any one of her other moves that don't require any meter to finish a combo because essentially you'd be finishing a combo with a second meter and you'd have nothing to start uh pressure after that so um i just want to quickly go over her combo enders uh segueing from that so this itself right oh, let me turn off these easy crushing blows this is a common ender people use that leaves you at a solid uh 19 frames of advantage sometimes even more this itself, uh, Augur Lunge, when uh, meter burnt, uh, leaves you at 29 frames. However, she has better options uh, that pretty much do the same thing. So let's say, for instance, we're going to go over her bread and butter combo. This. Finishing it with the blade spin, you have 53 hit frames of advantage. 53 frames of advantage. That's literally double what this offers you now all you're missing out on is maybe a percentage like one or two percent of damage but you get much better pressure so now once you do this you can react to a roll uh you can even do a deep jump setup you can pretty much like jump over and try to get them to uh to change directions so that they mess up their wake up inputs not the up three or up two but if they try to get up with a move um, you can make a lot of things with. Now, just to show mid-screen what the differences are, uh, if you do a simple combo like this, this leaves Great Oki enough time to get a shield out and to start pressure. This is why it's my it's my absolute favorite. So once again, I'm sure, but actually doing it uh, with proper timing. So that's already on its way out, and I'm protected from a projectile. That, to me, is the superior uh, mid-screen ender, but there are some more. So if you want a tiny bit of damage, and you want more uh, corner carry, then you're going to use this one. Because you're closer to them, and you're in a favorable position at this point, right? Um, now... The other one that I showed you before that is best for anything that won't be near the corner, which a lot of times you'll find uh, nobody wants to be in the corner, so they're going to try to hit the mid-screen. Um, then you have the ender that actually does the most damage and gives you more frame advantage. That would be the head. So believe it or not, the head itself is one of the best combo extenders uh, on initial knockup. Uh, and it's also the more damaging ender. It's the most damaging ender out of the three. So, blade spin you use when you want to continue laming somebody out. Like, let's say, for instance, Liu Kang, you don't want to always be fighting him up close. You want to do the blade spin. You want to put a shield out, and you want to keep trying to lame him out. And you want to get him to try to do a kick, you know, so that you can dash forward and punish it. Uh, something against, like, Noob Saibot. You might want to really keep him pressured in the corner. So you may want to end it with 
Yeah, so depending on what you want. So if you want corner carry, you're going to use, you know, the auger lunge. If you want to stay close to them, if you want um, to keep them far away and continue zoning, then you're going to do the blade spin. And if you want more damage plus the the a little bit uh, more advantage than auger lunge, but you want to stay far away, you can always use this as an ender. Um, now, she has quite a few gimmicks. Um, and I'm not even going to say gimmicks, they're strategies. Um, Frost is constantly hit with the, uh, oh, but she can't mix you bat, right? Now, let's say you failed to, to throw, I mean, to uh, escape one of her throws. And she has you in the corner, she hits you with some combo, and instead of doing a full combo, she ends it with this. That's plus 16. That means that this back three, that's 16 frames, is guaranteed. That means you have to block it. Right? So if I hit you with this and you're looking for the low, everyone gets conditioned to start blocking low. I can do this. Right? I can do that. That's 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 an option. Universal instant overheads are pretty fast. Blocking a 20 frame overhead is hard. An 11 frame overhead with granted, you know, one or two extra frames of jump uh, is really hard to to react to. So once you get that, you're fighting a, a Frost who has a loaded Fatal uh, Crushing Blow. You're, you don't want to take this. And you don't want to take this into a full combo either. Because then she can just refreeze you and keep you right here. All her options are going to do 30% plus. Uh, except for this one. You know? So, sometimes it's better just to take that. But then when you go to take that, you're going to hit by the back three. <laughs> so her corner game is strong. Um, just to reiterate. And with the buff of back one, she can now punish rolls even better. She can do this pretty consistently too. Just with the meaty. Um, so yeah, she's really strong. And like lastly, her down three buff is a big one. It's a, it really is a big one. If I set a character to start jumping, uh, n people just can't jump around anymore on her. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Uh, let's set him to jump forward. You get hit by one of these. And you're seriously reconsidering jumping again. Re reconsidering rolling. She she really removes a lot of options. Now, I will say that when she knocks you down in the corner, one of the best things you can do is, quite honestly, just try to delay wake up. Um, and if she reads that, she can do something to you as well. But... Um, I'd say that that's what makes her strong. I think she has one of the strongest corner games, um, especially for Oki due to blade spin. Uh, now, just very quickly, I want to go over, um, lastly, really, uh, her ability to zone. As I mentioned before, she's not a zoner, um, not the strongest zoner in the game. She's not a runaway character. She's not a super far rushdown character, but she gets into a position where she can do all three. Right, so mid screen, I would end every single combo against Liu Kang with a blade spin. Get this going, get one of these meaty out, right? Because at that point, if he tries to do the kick, he's gonna get hit by that. So there are times where you get knockdowns and you start zoning them out. You have to start backing away. Her cryo stance, this is pretty weak in terms of damage uh, because both hits have to hit in order to even land 8%. However, it's really hard to jump over. And if they try to jump over it, you can always confirm into that and you'll get, you know, you'll net some more damage. Um, on top of that, it's pretty hard to just blindly zone her. So let's say you're a character that has a life lead um, or not even a life lead. Let's say you're a character who's mainly known for zoning, right? Uh, I'm going to record uh, Liu Kang just doing what he does best. Walk back, do this, walk back, do a bunch of these. Gonna continue to try to do this, right? So, she has the ability to do stuff like this. Where once she gets this, you have no chance to just get up and start zoning again. Because she can knock you down over and over again. Now you have to actually duck since it's a high, right? Now that the shield has been buffed as well, it makes this zoning war easier. Now she can actually duck meter burn projectiles on reaction. 
So that wasn't a thing before. She would do a fireball and she'd get hit in the face. Now she can do that. So she is pretty strong when it comes to zoning. Um, only when it comes to counter zoning, really. Like, And when she has a life lead. So she gets that going, she got knocked down, and now she can do something else. Even on block, she can get this out and get it going. Well, now when he does that. Like this. See? So, she's better at stopping you from zoning and keeping you from zoning than she is just straight up zoning you out. Unless she has a life lead, it becomes really hard to fight Frost. Because then she starts backing up with back twos and projectiles. But, yeah, I mean, this character overall, I'm, I'm really happy at the place that she's in. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm happy that she didn't get her back two buffed because her back two is already strong as is. It's a 19 frame mid that goes farther than most characters' moves. And it leads into a crushing blow. Um, I'm not going to talk about the topic that's been beaten to death, the back 2-2 two -two into, into this, because back 2-2, two -two, we all know, is flawless block uh, punishable. Uh, but not if they don't have meters. If they just if they just defend themselves against something you did, they they uh, rolled out or something like that, you can, you can freely go back into back 2-2. Two -two. It's all about reading your opponent's meter and making the right decision. Like, Frost is a character that rewards decision making and proper spacing. And I think that she's a character that is in a really good place with uh, Ice Machine. Uh, my next video is going to be on her other variation, uh, Frostbite. But uh, that's another day. Um, hopefully sometime by the end of this week. But Anyway, thank you guys. This is a long, drawn-out video, but I, I never got to speak on on Frost, and um, yeah, these are my thoughts. Uh, I will follow up with uh, a combo video as well. Um, it's not a full-length one, but more so just showing optimal combos uh, with one meter or less. Uh, but yeah, thanks.